Hey everybody, welcome back. So I thought that we should make a fun craft to go with our folktale story of the Tale of Three Trees. And I found a really fun sun catcher silhouette craft that we could make. And it looks really nice. It's a cloudy day here in Pennsylvania, so you can't see it very well. So we'll do it up with the, the light. But you can kind of see in the light how it shines through the colored uh, tissue paper in the back up against the black cutouts that we put in the front. And you can hang that in your window in the sun and it will remind you of our Easter tale today about the trees and what they want to be when they grew up. So this is kind of a two-part project and you're going to have to let it dry so you might want to start it um, in the morning so you can finish it in the afternoon or start it at the evening and then go to bed and finish it when you wake up in the morning. But whatever it does take probably um, a few hours for the paper to dry if you're going to do it the way I'm going to show you. Um, but if you don't have time there's other options. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need um, to do this craft is going to be some coffee filters, some markers, some wax paper or paper towel or some kind of absorbent surface, and a spritzy bottle of water. Um, if you don't have coffee filters, you could just use tissue paper for our project and then glue them behind the black silhouette frame. You could also just take regular computer paper and color it with markers on the background in the circle of shape that you want to make your craft. Um, but this is kind of a fun way to make a translucent drawing. So what you want to do is first take a coffee filter and you want to smoosh it nice and flat. And when it's all flattened out, you want to, you want to pick your colors. And uh, you don't have to go really overboard. You let your kids' imaginations go on this. Um, but you want to use, um, probably prefer not use Sharpie markers. They don't bleed quite as well. Um, they can bleed through onto your surface and then ruin your surface. So I think that your Crayola markers are usually your better bet um, or your off-brand Crayola markers. Um, they work best for this project. And you just want to uh, do a design of any kind that you want of your variety of colors. I want my background to be kind of a um, sunrise or sunset kind of background so I'm going to pick those colors that you see and put those all around my coffee filter. Um, my youngest did one the other day and she made an apple tree on her design and a rainbow and it turned out really cute. Um, we just hung that in the window um, open and free. And we're going to need some orange for our sun sunrise colors here. Um, to kind of get this going here and we'll put some orange around it and a little bit of pink I think that'll kind of add that nice and you can see I'm just kind of scribbling a little bit for young kids who are learning how to use color crayons and hold their pencils this is a great craft opportunity for them to learn that fine motor skill and how to properly use a pencil or a marker or a crayon Okay, so when you get it all filled out the way that you want, you can put your markers away. And then you want to get out your piece of wax paper or your um, paper towel, um, tin foil, whatever you'd like to use. Um, you just don't want to lay this directly on the surfacing of your table and get it wet because it's going to bleed through and then stick to your table. And you'll be really frustrated in trying to get it off. So you want to get your spray bottle. And you really want to spray and saturate your coffee filter really good. You want to get it nice and wet and then you'll already see the color starting to bleed and run together and as you can see it's um, stuck to my wax paper nicely. Um, it's really kind of hard to lift it up and your fingers will get marker all over it. As you can see they kind of blend together and it makes a lovely mess on the um, mat on the table. So we're just going to put this back down here on the, the table and since I absorbed color on that side we'll rotate it and do the same on this side, kind of even it all out. And we are just going to let that dry. And we'll let that sit for several hours until it's dry. And as you can see, there is a little bit of residue underneath from the, um, from the water. And you're going to need a paper towel to clean that up. And we have a towel like so. And so when it's all dry, it'll look a little bit like this. Um, this was one I did earlier and it's now all dried out and um, hard and crispy. And you can kind of see where the water um, forms some droplets and dried and how the colors blended together. Um, the reds and the oranges and the yellows all kind of blended together to make a shape. I think I had a little bit of blue in this one too because there's a little bit of a, a blue stain here. And it creates a nice little pattern background. You can do circles, you can do square shapes, triangles, whatever you'd like to do um, to make your colors blend. And we're going to set that off over here. The next thing you're going to need now 
you're going to need a ruler and a pencil, scissors, a hole punch, a couple pieces of black instruction paper, some glue. You're going to also need a small plate or something that's going to be a little bit smaller than your coffee filter to trace. Unless you're really good with freehand drawing circles and I am not good at that at all. So what you're going to want to do is take your dried coffee filter and you want to trace it around on your black paper. You just want to go all the way around like so. until you have a nice circle. Now, if you can't see the graphite on the black paper, I recommend you use a white crayon or a white pencil. But if you can see the graphite, that works too. And then we just need to cut that out. Now, to save time, I would cut the two sheets together. I'm actually going to do one right now because our project is still drying. Well, I guess I could do both. I'll do both. And we're going to cut off the bottom. We'll use that in a minute to make our silhouette shapes. And we're going to cut out our circle now, right on our drawn line. If you're not really good at cutting yet, that's okay. Have a parent or caregiver help you out with this part of the project. Um, otherwise, if you're learning how to use scissors, this is a great way to learn how to turn the paper while you're guiding your scissors around. Circles are fun to cut out. The next part of our circle cutting, though, you're really going to need someone to help you out with because this is a little bit more challenging. So we're going to discard this paper. And now you're going to get your smaller plate or circle or whatever um, you found that you can trace for the inside because all we really want is the border of our black circle. We don't want the inside part. So we're going to trace our circle around that again. And this time we're going to cut again. Now how do I cut that out without cutting the edges? Well this is an old secret that I learned when I was in school. You want to have your parent or caregiver take the sharp edge of the, the scissors and poke a hole right in the middle. You can also, if you don't want to stab yourself, fold your paper in half like so and cut a snip like that. And lo and behold you have a hole in the middle and then you can just cut up like that and now you can cut around and that way you'll get a perfect ring without having cut through it. And since we're going to discard the paper in the middle anyways, it doesn't matter that we cut through the middle of our paper. And we come around again, so this would be a good chance to practice more cutting skills. And all the way to the edge. And we can discard that. And so now you have two rings. And we're going to be placing these around our dried tissue paper circles like so. And we'll wait for our other one to dry and put that one on it. Now you want to take your remnant, your black paper remnant, and what I did is on white computer paper I made a template. I freehand drew across with my um, with my ruler and my pencil and, um, and I made a, a template to trace because I'm really not good at drawing anything freehand. I always need something to follow. Um, art is not my gift but I do like to play with crafts, so we do our best. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not trying to earn any art prizes here. We're just trying to have a good time and be creative. Okay, so once you get your, your cross shape all traced out, we're going to fold our paper in half, or I mean right up to the edge of the cross like that. And then you want to fold it again on its backside because we want to make we actually want to make um, a couple of these crosses. So, because you're going to need four of them total, you need three for the top circle and you need one for the bottom circle. So by folding your paper like this, you'll get one, two, three. So then you're also going to want to take your second sheet of paper here and you want to make sure you have enough of an edge here. And we can put that right behind it also. And with one solid cut, we can cut out four crosses at one time. Unless you want to cut out four crosses at one time, that's always fun too. Um, just come up here and then follow the lines that you drew. If the paper's too thick because it's folded, maybe have a parent or caregiver help you. Um, or like I said, cut them out individually. We have lots of time to do these things now at home, so um, there's no rush. Like sometimes in Sunday school when we really have to hurry. Because otherwise we'll be late for church. 
and here we go and that side's done and and we'll go here and one more clip and we're done and look at the lovely mess mrs both made okay so we're gonna push all that off to one side and you do need your crosses to be um you want the two that are going to be on each side of the cross on the top we need to have them be a little bit smaller than the big cross so we're going to take our four crosses here and we're going to pick two of them and we're going to cut them to be a little bit shorter oh that one's nice and big so we'll take these two and we'll trim the bottoms of them a little bit so they are a little bit shorter so that when you glue them on here you'll have your big cross in the middle and then two crosses that would be on the side and you're just going to want to take your Elmer's glue and glue those into place like so then we can make the other um, tissue paper circle that we're going to make I'll take these off for now and to do that you're going to need your black paper again and this time I made a boat shape template and you're going to come over here to your black paper you're going to trace just one of these um, again with this I just made a half circle a half moon um, base um, I traced um, I think I traced a um, a lid from a jar to make that nice circular base and then I just used my ruler to create the nice straight lines for the sail and the triangle and then we also have a manger box a feed box for the animals and here again too this is pretty simple um, I'll show you a quick trick on how to make that so it's nice and symmetrical um, Mrs. Post is a little OCD and she likes to have everything exactly the way it should be on both sides and I'll show you a trick for doing that okay so we've traced out our patterns on this side so first we're gonna go ahead and cut out our feed box so here's what I recommend you do for that you want to fold your traced pattern in half like so and then cut one side because when you cut on the one side the other side is sure to be then because you folded it right down the middle of the box and we're going to come up for the leg and then come up for the box and for the top of the box and then over here we're going to do middle and the bottom leg and voila a feed box just like that to go with our cross and last but not least is to cut out the boat and we'll just quickly cut this out again too again this is really good practice for new beginner cutters um, help them cut on straight lines and angles curves um, really gives them the practice that they're going to need for kindergarten um, and first grade um, as they go to the school levels and as they get older for those of us who get older it's good to practice too it keeps our hands from getting arthritis all right and so then there's your boat if you have lines on here that bother you you can just quickly erase them and they come off without destroying any of the paper just like that so there you are so there's your um, silhouettes for the second sheet and again we're just going to glue them on so we're going to glue our ring on first you just want to glue along the edge like so and it gets a little messy flip it over and glue it on the edge of the paper I found that if I flipped it upside down um, we could center it a little bit better and then just smooth it out nice and there's that and now we can go ahead and add our cross and our boat and our manger. And we're just going to put a bead of glue on each of these. And we put the cross in the middle. Like so. And your boat we're going to put on the side. Like so. And the manger on the side over here. And it's all nice and glued and we can glue them down like so you can arrange them as you like 
you need to move them over a little bit, you can um, just to make sure they all fit. The hardest part is making sure everything is the right size. Okay, once you get them all on there, now we have to add um, the connecting um, holes and yarn strings between our two um, pieces. And so you're going to need some yarn for this or string, and you're going to need a hole puncher or really sharp scissors to stab through your, um, your silhouettes here. And you just want to pick a hole on the top of the one with the cross and the boat and the manger. And then on the one with the three crosses that we did originally, you want to poke a hole in the top and the bottom um, at equal distance across from each other. Then you're going to need some yarn. Um, years ago, I gave each one of my children a huge wad of yarn. Well, I gave them a new skein of yarn and told them to have fun with it in my living room. They spiderwebbed the whole place and a glorious afternoon of raucous fun. And I decided I wasn't going to be a knitter after that. But this is the last of it, so yay. But you want to you want to cut off about um, five or six inches of the yarn, and then you can really knot it any way you like. I like to do um, a, a knot where it kind of knots in on itself, and when you do that, you want to fold the string over on top of itself like so, and then you want to come in through the hole with the um, looped end and push it through. And then when it comes up, you want to take the open end of your strings and push it through the loop. And then that kind of secures it to that um, hole. And then when you come to the other end here, which we're going to punch a hole in this side, we're going to pretend that we've got our tissue paper on here. Then you would go taking your yarn together again, and you're going to push it through the hole. And then you want to come around the strings you have here so that you have a nice loop here in between. And um, pop it through that hole that you just created. Get the other one. Sometimes it's tricky with the two strings. Um, then you want to pull them up like that. And then they form a nice little, um, like a tie knot, like a Windsor knot there. And then you just want to trim off the edges. And you're going to want to do the same at the top and um, punch a hole up here like I said. And this time you're going to want to also take about six inches of yarn or less if depending on how big of a, a loop you want. And again loop it together like that and punch this through your hole. And then with the loop open, like that, you want to take your two open ends and push it through the loop so you get that same um, cover knot there. And then here we just want to loop it around on itself again and push them through the hole that you made with your finger until it comes off as nice and tight and as high as you like. The nice thing about this knot is it becomes adjustable. And then pull it tight. And then you'll be able to hang your um, silhouetted sun catchers up. So we still have to wait for our other one to dry here, and I'll finish that one up when it dries. But when you're all done, it should look like this. And you can use whatever colors you like. For the first one, I did use a variety of pinks and yellows, oranges and blues and purples. And for the bottom one, like I did with um, in our demonstration here, I just used yellows and reds and oranges and pinks. Um, you can use greens and browns and grays, whatever you would like. Um, the brighter colors will shine better against the silhouette, but have fun using your imagination. And like I said, when my daughter helped me do these, we made a bunch of these um, fun little sun catchers. We hung them all in the windows and we've got different patterns, pictures, colors, shapes. They look really cool when they dry and they're a lot of fun to make and they're easy to make. So if you're looking for something to do with a bored toddler, whip out your coffee filters, well, make a pot of coffee first and then get your coffee filters out and let the kids have a lot of fun with it. So I hope you enjoyed this craft. We'll see you later. Have a happy Easter. Bye-bye.